Alrighty guys, we are here for my August mid-month wrap up. And I said in the beginning of the year that I was gonna do a mid-month and end of month wrap up. And I feel like I haven't been very consistent with that and I should be because I love talking about books when they're fresh on my mind. I know my thoughts and feelings about them. And when I wait till the end of the month, I feel like my thoughts aren't as fresh. So that is why we are here today. We're gonna do this. We don't have that many books to talk about but we are going to talk about them while they're fresh on my mind. So let's jump on in. Alrighty, so the first three books we're going to talk about are actually part of a series. They are part of the Sweet Coastal Kisses series. We have books one through three. You guys know I love reading books in order. So let's jump on into the first one. We have For Butter or For Worse by Dina Lechemnant. I am probably butchering her name, but there is that stunning cover. And this is actually one that kept popping up on my like Amazon recommended type of like feed that goes on when you first log into Amazon. So I picked it up and I'm really glad I did. So this one is about King and Georgie. Now this is a marriage of convenience, second chance. There is that one bed trope in here. So I do want to say that for people who love it and for others who are uncomfortable with it, it does mention them being close and like touching, but not in a sexual type of way. So I wanted to mention that that is in here. And I, like I said, I enjoyed the book. We have King who... He ends up inheriting his late uncle's bake shop. Not only that, but King actually owns his own surf shop as well. He does surf instructions as well. So between juggling, running the bake shop, running his own shop, doing surfing instructions and all of that good stuff, you get to see him really struggling with how to balance all of that. And then we have our main female character who is Georgie. And Georgie's doing really well for herself. She lives in a big city and she has a famous boyfriend. And like I said, she's just doing well for herself. What looks like, you know, from the outside looking in. Well, Georgie ends up making her way back to this small coastal town. And she actually ended up visiting this town in the summers with her parents when she was younger and working at King's uncle's bakery. So she ends up making her way back there and that is where her and King meet back up and run into each other. And you know, I don't wanna say too much because I don't wanna spoil it. It might be on the back here. I haven't read the synopsis and I'm gonna be quite honest with you. I went into this book blind. And I do recommend doing that because as you go in, the story unfolds of, you know, how the relationship was before, how they met, and all of that good stuff. I love the way this book unfolded. So don't want to give too much away, but I think the character development in this was amazing. I think how things unfolded was amazing. Like I said, I really had a really good time with this book. I forgot to mention a character. King has a pet llama named Prince Harry, and I felt like he was the star of the show. I loved when he popped into the book. It was so funny. There were so many laugh out loud moments with him, but I wanted so much more of Prince Harry because his parts were just so funny. I feel like he added so much to the story and I just had a really good time reading his parts in the book. Now, with this book, I do wanna say it is under 200 pages. It is 179 pages. As you can see there, it's really thin. And I wanted so much more from this book and that's a good thing. I wanted to read more, I wanted to know more, but like I said, it just left me wanting more. And that's why I ended up rating it a 3.5 stars. So I wanted more of what their relationship looked like before, how they interacted with one another. I kind of just wanted more flashbacks. I wanted to know more about Georgie's relationship with King's uncle. I wanted to see more of it. I also wanted to see more of King and his uncle's backstory. I wanted to see more of Georgie's family and how like they reacted to the marriage of convenience going on here because since Georgie and her family went to this small coastal town in the summer and they had to know King and his family. I wanted to see, you know, what they thought about it. And I just feel like there were just pieces that I wanted more of. So that is why I gave it a 3.5. Again, a 3.5 is not a bad rating. I enjoyed it, but there were pieces I wanted more of. So that was for better or for worse. So I moved on along to book number two, which was Crush Landed by Michelle Angus. And there is that stunning cover. And this one is about Molly and Coop. Now, 
Coop is a character from the first book. He is King's best friend. Like I said, you don't have to read these books in order, but you do see a lot of Coop in book one. And that's why I was so excited to get to book two when I saw the story was about him and had him in it. Because there's also stuff that I wanted to know about his background as well. So this book has Coop. Coop is also a pilot for a float boat on the small coastal town. And then we have Molly who is a, I believe she's a sea turtle biologist. And she actually has the opportunity to go on a research project and she actually has to plan how to get there. And obviously Coop with his float boat and things like that. So there is that. I want to say I did not get very far into this book. I want to say I got like 25-ish percent of the way through and I just, I wasn't intrigued. The character, like Molly's character just <sighs> aggravated me a little bit. She read pretty immature. Her and her best friend read very immature and almost kind of like childlike. And that was kind of aggravating me a little bit and I wanted to push on so bad because I wanted to hear Coop's story but I do have to say like the beginning of the book here is a lot of Molly's point of view and I just I didn't enjoy her character and I wanted to pick up something that I was like really going to enjoy and I I'm really disappointed that I didn't like this one and this is a me thing the reviews on Goodreads are absolutely phenomenal so it is purely a me thing and the people that I talked to who have already read this book really enjoyed it. I talked to people personally who have read it and enjoyed it. It's a me thing, I promise you. So don't let me discourage you from picking this one up. I just did not like Molly's character. A lot of people said that even though I didn't like it, Molly does get better throughout the book, but <sighs> she just aggravated me a little too much. So that is what I felt about this one and it was just a little slow going in the start there so I ended up putting this one down and DNFing this one. I thought it was going to be a soft DNF but if I'm going to be completely honest I really have not had the urge to pick it back up. So there is Crush Landon. Then I went on to book number three which is To Have and To Scold by Deb Goodman. There is that stunning cover. I know I am just I'm obsessed with the covers here. So in this one we have Dallas and we have Beck and I also ended up starting to write and tab in this one and I loved that this one actually started with a little like scene with Prince Harry and I ended up writing like Prince Harry appearance. Um I absolutely adored that and it was a, another one of those laugh out loud scenes with Prince Harry. I, I love his scenes. I love him. He needs his own book. But anyway, <laughs> we have this one and this one is about Dallas and Beck. We also see Beck in book one and I really was intrigued to hear more about his character in book one as well. And we have Dallas who is essentially like a wedding planner. She ends up getting fired from her job and ending up in in this coastal town and I love seeing how they met. I thought it was funny. It had to do with Prince Harry. Like I said, I love that. But there were things in this. It was mainly the writing style that I, for some odd reason, was just like not getting along with. I don't know. There was something about the writing that just it's not for me. Like I said, this book also has really good ratings on Goodreads. So this is a me thing. I also talked to people who have read this book and really, really, really loved it. So do not let me discourage you from this one either. So some of the things that I just didn't get along with, like I said, was the writing style of this one. There was also a joke in here that had like sexual innuendo to it and I just like read it and cringed and I know it wouldn't be a big deal to a lot of people. I'm trying to find it. I know it wouldn't be, yeah, I know it wouldn't be a big deal to a lot of people, but to me it was cringeworthy. I felt like the book would have been better without it and it was just so not needed. But I know a lot of people probably laughed out loud at it. I just, it's not for me. It's not something I necessarily want in my books. And I keep debating on putting it on the screen or not, but I'm not gonna do that. This book is available on Kindle Unlimited if you have it. And it is on page six at the top. It is the fourth line from the top. And I'll just say that it mentions the word wet. 
and it has a sexual connotation to it but I do want to say that it is not meant that way it is meant about another event that has nothing sexual to do with it but you get where she was going there. So I just didn't like that either. I did want to mention that for people who don't like jokes like that in their books, this one does have that. Again, I don't know very much else about, you know, what goes on because I did DNF it after 20% just because I wasn't getting along with the writing. So while I did enjoy the characters more in this one than I did in book two, I just wasn't getting along with the writing style. So it was a DNF for me for this one as well. So that makes up the Sweet Coastal Kisses books and I may read book four and five. This is obviously a multi-author series so even though I didn't get along with some of these books I know that there is a chance for me to still get along with book four and five since it is multi-author and I do want to say that even though I didn't love these two books I do still want to pick up different books from these authors and you know read something else from them and see what I think about their other books so I am not like discounting them all together I'm not discounting their writing these books just in particular were not for me at this time and I just haven't felt the urge to pick them back up so I honestly will be unhauling these and I am only keeping books that I absolutely absolutely love on my shelf so these will be going up on my pango and like I said they are and it well this first book is like fully annotated and the next two books the first couple chapters are annotated and whatnot but I figured I would pass them along to somebody else who could absolutely love them and keep them on their shelves because they are absolutely stunning and then I could when I want to pick up book four and five pick them up on kindle unlimited so there are those three books and I only have two more books left to talk to you guys about. Getting into this next book. This next book was a six star read. It is an all time favorite. I have not stopped ranting and raving about it. Since finishing this book I have picked it up and looked through it multiple times just going through all my annotations and rereading portions of the book and I've contemplated picking this book up again to read it. And if you guys don't know already, I did do a single book review. Like this was the first ever singular book review I've ever done on my channel, which I will link down below. This book I'm talking about is Lulu's Cafe by T.I. Lowe. I adore this book. It is completely the first especially the first portion of the book is like completely annotated there are portions of the book where it's like all highlight under as you can see there it's crazy I love this I cannot say enough good things about it but I do want to mention that this book does contain very very heavy topics it is a very emotional read there is violence on a page now there is description of the violence but it's not too too much that I wasn't able to read it but I have heard people say that they did need to put it down because it was too much for them so if that is something you're hesitant about I did want to mention that as well and I'm not going to go too in depth into this one because like I said I do have that video where I talk more in depth about it over there so I don't want to go too much into detail about it over here but I do Again, want to reiterate looking up trigger warnings before you jump into this one. And the synopsis on the back, you know what? Let me read the synopsis on the back. I feel like that's the perfect way to give you some background. And then if you want more on my thoughts and opinions, you can go to the video listed down below because like I said, I just ranted and raved about this book. So we have, on the run from a violent past, Leah Allen arrived in tiny Rivertown, South Carolina, battered and broken, but ready to reinvent herself. By a stroke of fate, Leah is drawn to the southern hospitality of a small cafe. Lulu, the owner, offers her a job, a place to stay, and a new lease on life. Leah quickly finds herself embraced by the quaint community as she tries to put herself back together. Soon, Leah meets Crowley Mason, the most eligible bachelor in town. A lawyer and friend of Lulu's, Crowley is wary of Leah's sudden mysterious arrival. Despite his reserve, something sparks between them that can't be denied. But after all she's been through, can Leah allow herself to truly love and be loved, especially when her first urge is to run? That is the perfect synopsis. Again, please look up trigger warnings if you are going to jump into this book. But this was a six star read, an all time favorite. I cannot say enough good things about this book. The character development, the relationship development, the redemption, the healing, everything that ends up happening in the end here is just absolutely phenomenal. Highly recommend picking it up once you look up those trigger warnings. So 
that is Lou's Cafe. And then last but not least, I ended up picking up Wrangled by Lilith by Remy Carrington. And what I love about this book, well, we'll get into the backstory here in a little bit, but what I loved about this was the main characters in this relationship were over 40 years old. I feel like main characters are often not over 40. So to get this couple and you know, their age group in here, I really enjoyed it. I had a really good time with it. And I think Pam, who is Remy Carrington, that is like a pen name. She did such a good job with it. But anyway, this is the story of Lilith and Bo. Lilith was a trophy wife and she had recently found out that her husband was cheating on her with a much younger woman and she ends up wanting a fresh start. So she ends up taking herself, her car, and her cat with very little money in the bank and wanting to have a fresh start and going on her own little journey and venture until something goes wrong and there's a problem that happens, a situation that happens, and the only one that can help her is Bo. And Lilith is in trouble because Bo is a very handsome man and Lilith has, you know, essentially like sworn off men, wants nothing to do with them, wants just a fresh start on her own. But Bo is the only one there to help her, who can help her, who has come across her when she's in this situation. So I love that. I love to see how it played out. Bo is also the owner of a ranch and you get to see the ranch setting and it's just, it's a really good time. Bo also has things going on there himself with past partners and like all of that good stuff. You get to see the background of their previous relationships of both of them and I really really love that about this book. I also loved like I said how the humor was woven in here. I loved the side characters as well which makes me even more excited to continue on with this series. Lilith was also a photographer before being a trophy wife and you get to see that and how she kind of reinvents herself. Character development, relationship development was absolutely amazing. There was a little mystery going on here. It was just a fun time and I ended up giving it four stars and like I said, cannot wait to continue on with this series. I did end up purchasing the entire series. I also ended up purchasing the Never Say Never series by Remy as well. And I'm excited to, you know, read both of them and get into both of them and continue on with Remy slash Pam's books. So I had a really great time. I thought this was really well written. The banter, it's like A plus banter, chef's kiss banter. I loved it. So if you haven't read anything by Remy just yet, definitely give it a go. I, like I said, I loved it and I'm very excited to continue. So those were all of the books I ended up reading in the first half of August. If you've read any of them, please let me know. Leave your thoughts and opinions down below. Again, if your thoughts and opinions are different than mine, that is a-okay. Leave them down below. I love hearing everyone's thoughts and opinions. Reading is so subjective, but I want to say that with having different thoughts and opinions, it's amazing because everyone will get to see everyone's opinions. You may be helping another reader pick up or not pick up a book based on what you liked and what you didn't like. And you know, people have different boundaries. and It's just so good to see what other people have to say about books. So if you read any of them, leave it down in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings. So with all of that about these books being said and done, I also want to know what books did you pick up in August so far? What have you read? What have you loved? What have you not liked as much? Leave that in the comments down below as well. Thank you guys for sticking with me for this video. I truly appreciate it. If you made it this far, leave a little what kind of emoji? Leave a sun emoji because summer is coming to an end and I'm kind of sad about it, but also really excited to jump into fall here very shortly. So leave a sun emoji down in the comments if you made it this far. Again, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys so, so much. If you liked this video, make sure to give it that thumbs up. And if you want to stick around for more bookish related videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would absolutely love to have you. Thank you guys again so, so much, and I will see you guys soon.